What do you want to talk about today, Minx? I want to talk about something depressing. Okay, should we talk about depression? That's a good idea. Have you ever been depressed, Minx? Yes, I have. When was that? I would say, like, realistically, for most of my life. Like, Really? Are you still depressed? Um, not all the time. But sometimes it comes along and kicks you in the outside. I did a video about this a while ago, like, talking about, like, my own, like, personal battles with depression. And I've certainly been a lot more depressed than I am now. But some days, you know, I think anyone with clinical depression some days would just wake up and be like, nope. what the fuck? You know, they'd be like, I'm, d like, I'm done for the day before it started. And... What do you do on those days? Lay in bed all day. Lay on the couch, actually. Is usually I usually mm. get out of the bedroom and lay on the couch. And then don't move. I spent a great proportion of last week doing just that. Really? Yeah. Um, I miss Chrism at the moment. And oh. just felt generally blah about work. Like, I would say, like, work is the thing that actually affects me the most. Like, if YouTube hasn't done well or something I uploaded didn't do as well as I wanted it to... That hits. I'll, it'll really hit me hard. And I will just be like, bleh. And I'll sort of, like, just flop. And not work, and then there'll be days without videos because I can't focus on making any videos in the first place. And I'm currently in that exact same position. Like mm -hmm. past few weeks, I haven't released anything just because I can't bring myself to do it. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say it's depression though; it's just a lack of motivation for me. But for you, it's like a clinical si style of depression type thing. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, do you have you ever suffered from depression? I've never had depression, but I've lived with someone who has, and that's not fun. Like being on, I. Either side of it is horrible. Being on on the side where you are, you love someone who has depression, is you are entirely powerless to do anything. Like I, I tried everything I could, researched all over the internet, like trying to find the types of um, treatment or medication that might work, the things that I could do to help. And the way that I had to end up um, dealing it with it was to stop caring. <laughs> Because a depressed person, at least the person I was with, was really, um, like, aggressive sometimes and angry. Mm -hmm. And it just alternated between this kind of aggressive personality and then this, like, they realised what they'd been doing kind of thing and were just sad. Um, and in order to deal with it, I just had to be a bit kind of empty emotionally, which isn't fun. No, that sounds like it would have been very difficult to deal with. Yeah. So it's, it's taken a, quite a while to try and get somewhat out of that. But yeah, mm. How, what's it like in being within the depression? I don't know, it's like a cloud is around you of being, like, lost. You feel like everything is worthless. You feel like you're worthless. You feel like... I liked Lost. It was an alright series. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm just... Lost joke. I was a lost joke. <laughs> Joking about severe depression there. Sorry. <laughs> But yeah, like, um, I feel that, yeah, like I say, it's like, just like you're trapped in like a dark bubble almost, like a dark cloud and nothing can really bring you out of it. Like, whenever I made, when I made the video last time talking about mm. depression, people were like, oh, you should be happy because you've got this, this and this. The thing yeah. is, unfortunately, when you suffer from clinical depression, you can't help it. You can't logic your way yeah. out of it because it's chemical. Exactly. It's I, like, yeah. I have a lot of things to be grateful for, but when you're depressed, you can't help but not be really 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 fucking depressed and it's almost in some ways impossible to like break free of that there's a i i, I wrote some documentaries on this recently there is a dna um like something within your genes where if you have this certain gene you are 30 times more likely to be depressed That's and like clinically depressed so it is very much a genetic thing it's not some mm -hmm. you know it's not get over it cheer up it's like, there's the statistics that back it up. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. I think that, um, obviously if you suffer from depression, there are ways to alleviate have it. Have you ever had degree. any, like, it, when you're in a depressed state, have there ever been any things which have helped you to come out of it, even like once or twice? Um, I mean like distracting myself does, like if a friend will talk to me at the time, mm. or if it, like, it has to be more like a friend forcing themselves to talk to me yeah. or get me out of it, you know what I mean? Because other times I feel that I won't want to talk to people because I'm in the depressed state. I mean, there's certainly been times that when I've had like severe bouts of depression, which have gone on for a long time, where talking to a professional has helped. Yeah. And I guess we should both say that, you know, if you are suffering from depression, that's 
a pretty good place to start is that's being what a helped. professional. That's what helped m the person I was with. It yeah. was therapy in the end. Therapy and medication. I mean, there's, I wouldn't say there's any magic answer to solving depression. Not at all. And everyone will respond to therapy or treatment in different ways. But it certainly is worth pursuing as much as you can because it's much better than being depressed. It's, it's, it's good to try and resolve it in some way. Has there been any positive side of it to you? Um, I guess I can be more empathetic towards other people with it. And I've been around and lived with other people who suffer from depression. Yeah. And knowing what they're going through personally, when I'm on days where I'm fine, means that I can understand more, mm. or perhaps respond to it in a more appropriate manner than people who don't get it at all. And just maybe have a better grasp of the situation, advice. You know, like I've referred people to counsellors before that I've had yeah. and things like that when they you know, lived in a similar area to me and, you know, there's plenty of ways of getting around it. There's this, the worst thing about depression as an illness, like if you have cancer or something, a lot of cancer sufferers end up saying stuff like, it's allowed me to appreciate life so much more, but depression fundamentally stops you from being happy no matter what. So no, like, change of your framing of, my, um, like, how you perceive the world affects it. You, you you can't, like, have a positive outlook on things and you can't, like, get any sort of enjoyment from within having depression because it ruins that, the fundamental aspect of being happy, mm -hmm. which is, that's the worst thing a human can have. Mm -hmm. Like, potentially depression is the worst thing because of that. Yeah, it's pretty bad. I think that a lot of people probably suffer from it more when they're younger. Really? I do. I think when I was younger, it was worse, and it at least it felt worse mm. because I felt like oh, no one. I guess it was mixed in with like normal teenage no one hormones me on stuff. top of it. No one understands me, and I'm depressed on top of that, which mm. is really shit. And I think it's why a lot of teenagers feel more, perhaps more hopeless. Like I, I get a lot of messages from people saying, you know, I feel really terrible. You know, a lot of the time, what do I do? And Especially at that point, I would say the advice is to try and speak to someone and, you know, get help. I mean, there's help available for young people in many, many, many countries. And a lot of the time, I believe, at least in the Western world, you'll be able to get that for free as well, I think, in a lot of instances. Yeah. Because there'll be support there for people. It's got to suck being depressed in, like, sub-Saharan Africa or something. Yeah. No one's going to even think it's a thing. Mm -hmm. like, and that was true like not long ago as well like if I, I've talked to my parents about this kind of thing and like they've told me that it, when we grew up no one had depression it wasn't a thing people could have well, that's crazy what about all the people that killed themselves yeah like not a thing not a thing they're just crazy mm -hmm. <clears throat> so strange I think it's very much a thing and I think it's very much has always been a thing it's just the fact that now we acknowledge it more as a species yeah and try and help more and I guess if you're watching this and you do suffer from depression I know it really does sucks and some days are bad days but at the moment all days might be bad yeah. days but there are certainly ways of getting on top of it of beating it and living a much better and fuller life and I'm, I'm, I can feel like I'm a living testament to the fact that you can pull yourself out of like the depths um, especially if you try and enlist a helping hand along the way mm -hmm. and yeah, I mean, I said this in my previous video, but there's certainly help out there, and you can, you know, think... I'm going to fucking repeat the lyrics of our fucking song, but things are going to be okay, you know? It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Exactly. Things, things... Even if it doesn't feel like it will, things have a way of working out, and I speak from my 30 years of life experience, which I feel is a reasonable amount of time now. So you, I've been are, through a lot. you are definitely happy that you are alive. Yeah, I'm definitely happy I'm alive. That's and really considering cool that thing. I tried to commit suicide twice in my life, mm. I feel that I I have a right to say that. You know, I, I feel I feel like I'm in a good place to say that I'm very happy that I'm alive, and I'm really glad that those attempts didn't work out. What do you think when you think back to that those two circumstances where you were that close? Um, I just. At the time, you just feel like nothing is worthwhile. You feel like you've reached your bottom. You feel like you're in so much emotional pain that you want it to stop. And the only way that makes sense to stop it is to, is to end your life. Mm. And it's a delusion. It's a sickness, I want to say. 
like you were you were really ill if you reached that point you were yeah. genuinely really really ill and if you ever find yourself thinking like that you need to just try try and get some rationality back in your head and think I need to talk to someone I need to see someone you know I implore anyone that whoever watches this ever feels like that you speak to someone you speak to a professional call someone up there's so many free phone lines yeah, like yeah, the Samaritans yeah. and stuff I used to call the Samaritans all the time in the UK what do they like call, what, what do they do they just talk and they won't judge you or ask you anything that you don't want to tell them you can just talk about how you feel pour out your emotion and feel better and it's really helpful and then if you need more help they can refer you to people they can get things sorted out there, there are plenty of similar things in lots of countries yeah it's really important to do something like this. Just all, all that takes, you don't even have to go out then. If you if you're like have social anxiety, you don't want to go out, you can pick up the phone and speak to someone. You know? Mm-hmm. And That's so true. Good advice. Yeah. I mean, even if you don't want to speak to someone, they even have an email service oh, right. in the UK at least where you can email and they'll go back to you within a day and you get a response. I find like a lot more people are becoming... Um, depressed and cut off these days i i think it is that more people are rather than it's being diagnosed more frequently really do you think so yeah and i think it's because the um in general people don't meet up very often and because the internet allows us to explore such varied interests it means that when we are meeting up with people in school for instance Sometimes your interests have been so pushed to this far extreme that no one in your school can relate to you. So you have to find people who have like similarly obscure interests to interact with, which isn't always possible locally. So there's a fundamental problem with the current society, I think. We need to find a way for those people who have obscure interests to meet each other and um, be in a kind of a, a situation where it's easy and not awkward to make friends like they do things together i thought it was called uh um bronycon bronycon <laughs> <laughs> that's one example i'm joking i'm joking everyone by the way just to touch on this subject everyone thinks i hate like like bronies really and, and what do you think of stuff. bronies minx i i think i think i think i don't doesn't appeal to me at all mm. and i don't um find any interest in the subject material but in the grand scheme of things, I don't really give a shit what people do. I don't think someone's a bad person for being a brony. Or, yeah. But I don't even... I know there's lots of stereotypes as well, like, you know, like, per, like pervert people sort of, like, you know, mm. wanting to have sex with a pony or whatever and things like that. In any interest, you'll find perverts. Yeah, I mean, there obviously <laughs> are some perverts, but that's like you say, in any interest, there's going to be people who are into that sort of stuff. And to be fair, even then, if you really, really, really want to fuck a cartoon pony, I don't give a shit, really. <laughs> that's the title of the video. <laughs> do you want to fuck a cartoon pony? And depression. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so yeah, um, I don't, I don't really give a shit, and I, I might joke about it, but I joke about everything and mm. anything. So, yeah. Do you think you should joke about depression? Yeah, because it might make someone laugh and get them out of depression. That's how I've seen it. Because for me, I, if I didn't joke about having um, like endured being with I was with that person for a year and a half if I didn't joke about that then it would have just brought me down so much it's important to be able to laugh at most things in my opinion I would say anything but if I say that everyone's gonna get upset I'm gonna say it anyway it's important to be able to laugh at anything ooh edgy anyway guys we're gonna wrap up this video here I feel so if you are depressed and you watch this because of that there's I'll put some links in the description I think you know some general helplines and stuff if I can and, and if uh, you aren't depressed, then go into like biogenetic technology research and make a fortune by curing it. Exactly. Like if you cure depression, you're going to be rich as hell. Hashtag blessed. <laughs> God, what? Bye. <laughs> He's just going to put hashtag blessed on yeah. the screen. The claw. <laughs>